in the books that you published, uh, I've read, that you make a mention of the fact that source grows, is, is ongoing, is, is developing, and we are contributing in some aspect to that development. You are part and, of source, and you are a leading edge factor in the expansion. Yeah, that was rather startling uh, to read that. But um, how else can you approach it? In other words, many humans we know think that source is complete and perfect, mm -hmm. and that man is imperfect and trying to catch up with perfection. But when you think about coming to a place of perfection, you just have to acknowledge that that is a place of no more expansion, which must be endedness. Mm -hmm where instead you are the leading edge of that source energy out here in the more risky contrast coming to new preferences developing new desires which source is then answering what an important part of this eternally expanding experience you are it was. It was very uh, uplifting or exciting just to conceive that and get that idea. And, I and once you get it, you realize that nothing else makes sense. Well, I guess so, but I'd want to fit something into the picture. And I remember that once I was confronted with a situation in which I could either lie or tell the truth. And I decided that I'm going to tell the truth and this because this is who I am. And this is what I represent. And if you don't like it, it's too bad. But the experience was one of empowerment when I did. I felt whole about myself and who I was and that this is who I am. So my question is, we make choices and they contribute to our uh, development or our growth or whatever it is. Or who are, we all came from the same place and I'm confused by the behavior of people. What happens, uh, people like a person who may be deceived into blowing himself up for somebody else's political purpose, a suicide bomber. What happens to a person like that? What, what has he done, not physically, but to his soul, his, his spirit, for having performed a behavior like that? Or other mass suicide or leaders of our nations? What have they done to themselves and, and to the, this, the, I don't know, the whole, the whole of what is for their, that, those kind of actions? Well, there is no negative repercussion to them or to anyone else, and we'll talk about that in more detail in just a moment. But we want to start by saying, when you think in terms of this emotional scale, how do you think a person is feeling when they make a decision to do something like that? Are they feeling Oh, they feel they're uplifted, they're excited about it, because why else would they do it? They're doing something good. They're being conned into it. Or are they in such utter despair at their seeming disempowerment that it is the only act of anything that they can think of that gives them any sense of power back? That's true, too. And so when you think about that kind of despair, imagine, well, don't try too hard, but imagine believing very strongly in something as you do and seeing the world responding very powerfully in a way that feels opposite to what you believe and someone else seeming to be powerful enough to restrict your behavior and deny you the activity that you believe you should be allowed and so sometimes people are in that place of perceived disempowerment because no matter what anybody else is doing they have no control in your experience, but a lot haven't remembered that. And so the only way to relief that they can find is removing themselves from this physical experience. And what happens to them when they do that, or when anyone makes their transition into non-physical, is in one fell swoop they leave behind all resistance. And they refocus into the energy. In other words, that's the quantum leap that you keep looking for from despair all the way into pure positive energy. That happens in the moment. And they don't look back at this experience with regret. The closest thing to regret that you might feel that they are feeling is a humorous acknowledgement of how it went down. There's no diminution of, of themselves or their, their wholeness? Uh, 
they've done something that's a violation of their basic integrity or whoever they are. Well, man has made that rule in his attempt to control the behavior. And we'll tell you how that unfolded. So here you are, an ornery rascal who wants to live your own life, let's say. And you live in an environment that has convinced itself that they can't have renegades like you running around doing what pleases you because when they look at your behavior, they feel bad. So they have discovered that they have to find a way of modifying or controlling your behavior so that they can feel better because they don't know anything about controlling their own vibration. They're still living very conditional love. They feel good under some conditions. They feel bad under other conditions. So they have discovered a long time ago that they need to control the conditions. So they make all kinds of rules which you continue to break let's say and and they just get harsher and harsher punishments but it doesn't do any good and you truly are some kind of a renegade and so then they say to you well you know maybe you think you can get away with it in this environment but when you die that's when your true punishment is going to come and it still doesn't thwart you at all and then they threaten you with death and they threaten you with what will come after death still hoping to modify your behavior so that they will feel better in other words it's all trying to satisfy their selfish nature and the concoctions of things that humans have come up with to try to control one another it's an astonishing bag of stuff that you come up with but you will understand when you make your transition you will understand what we are giving you here the thing that is humorous to us and we don't mean that in any way to be disrespectful of any of your beliefs but we want you to just contemplate from a rational standpoint the difference between getting run over by a truck or focusing upon something and disallowing your well-being to flow and experiencing uh, some deadly disease that takes you out slowly and making your transition and making a deliberate intent and taking yourself out. And we know that you're talking about the murder that they are offering to other people, but we want you to understand that even with all of the what you see as terrible things that you can think of to do one another that love of source never stops flowing to you because you are an eternal being you see and there is always the desire that you will reemerge back into your purest form and when you die every single time you do that when you die every single time you reemerge back into the pure positive energy essence that is really you then when you come forth into your physical body yes you can make choices that can cause you to separate or disconnect too strong of word from that energy that is really you but the suffering that happens while you're doing that is the length and breadth and depth of that suffering there is no punishment for what you have already done to yourself in other words that's like saying I'm perfect pure energy I eagerly go forth into non-physical I get confused I bang around I focus on things that cause me to diminish my connection to source energy I feel awful in my awfulness I do awful things to others which is the only time anybody does anything awful to anybody else is when they're diminished from their connection with source and then finally I do the ultimate thing I blow myself up and a bunch of other people too and in that moment the pain stops in that moment that's the extent of the negative stuff that's happening in the moment that that focus discontinues that focus that got you there in that place of disconnection you reemerge back into the pure positive energy of that which is you. Friends, you go to a horrible movie and you get up in the middle of it and you walk out and you don't take that movie and everything that you watched in there with you. You have a life that's bigger than what you saw in that movie. And you have a life that's bigger than any individual life that you are living here, you see. It isn't the way they've made it out to be. You are not being held accountable for every action and that negative action that you might have offered doesn't dog you for all eternity. You are too big and too long living for that. You never get it done and you cannot get it wrong and the reason you cannot get it wrong is because you never get it done. So you could stand in a horrible place but you're not done. You can still move up the emotional scale. Wow, it's kind of like well, what did, what did that life contribute to anything? It just seemed to be negative, took everything away. 
Uh, but I hear what you're saying. Well, what it, it contributed, like and here's the thing, you make a very good point here, because sometimes people will say to Esther or someone like Esther, who has tapped into source energy and who is expressing it in ways that are meaningful and helpful to others, sometimes people will say, well, isn't it nice to have those like Esther or those others who are able to contribute in that positive way? And we say, yes, Esther's in the place of allowing the answer to flow. But if somebody wasn't asking the question, there would be no answer. In other words, the process is someone has to have lived something that makes them ask. And part of that stuff that you and others, not so much you, but what you're observing in others, want to condemn, that action, that behavior, that wrong thinking that you would like to condemn or eliminate from the planet, that's that contrast that is causing the question. That's that contrast that puts the eternalness in eternity. That's a huge contribution. That's why it's leading edge. And what we're talking about here in a gathering like this is we don't want you to experience the range of ecstasy to agony. We want you to experience enough contrast that causes you to launch rockets. And we want those rockets to be not so far from where you are that you can't realize them in this lifetime. But even if you are unable to realize the personal benefit of your own asking, you have still contributed massively. And that's what we meant earlier when we said future generations. Those people that are dying and suffering in the Middle East and elsewhere today. Those mothers whose hearts are crying out are launching rockets of desire that Source is hearing and answering. And the world is becoming a better place as a result of their pain. But we are wanting you to understand the world can become a better place without the pain. You all are the ones that are choosing the extreme space between who you are and who you are allowing yourself to be. And that hell that they promise you is only lived right here on earth. It is your own denial of your connection with source. So what you just said, it doesn't have to be this way. In other words, we don't have to have this kind of pain. You do not. You do not. But you cannot ask them to all figure it out before you allow a ceasing of your pain. You've got to allow a ceasing of your pain regardless of what the others are doing because there will always be those who are still trying to figure it out. Esther has been watching her little granddaughter and Esther has this inclination to want to get out there ahead of her and buffer anything that could possibly hurt her. And Kate's mother, Tracy, Esther's daughter, wants to do it too but is wise enough to hold back because she knows that Kate's going to have to bump herself up a little bit before she makes her own decisions about what she's wanting to do. In other words, you have to have your own personal experience. Words really do not teach. It's odd we offer so many, isn't it? Words do not teach. It's life experience that teaches. And life experience then coupled with verbal explanation can sometimes be very meaningful. But Kate's going to bump her head and she's going to cut her finger and she's going to break a bone and she's going to get her feelings hurt and she's going to feel good and she's going to feel bad and through it all she's going to find her way and that's as it always should be. And hopefully she will have role models close to her that are rooting for her well-being and expecting the best and giving examples of well-being so that her well-being will be more predominantly activated but she has her own guidance system within her, you see. Well, and, uh, come down to it. It doesn't have to be this way. I know the way. That's the kind of, I'm looking at it. We make the choices to do this. Here's the thing. Teaching us faster. You've got to look into the world as we do and see it in its broadest scope. And we're talking about the world as it pulses today, your time-space reality. And we have to tell you that there is so much more realization right now of well-being than not. If you could take all of the people who are living right now and compare their level of wellness to their level of sickness, you would be astonished at the proportion of wellness as compared to the minuscule proportion of sickness. But when you get a world that shines the spotlight on all the sickness, it leads you to believe that there's much more sickness than there is wellness. And it just isn't true. There is so much more well-being. Your new goes all around the world, finds everything that they can find is wrong, 
exaggerates it, takes pictures of it, puts dramatic music behind it, distorts it, and then pumps it into your living room and gives you the impression that there's so much more that is not going well than that is going well. Even in a city like Baghdad, where horrible things are happening every day, there are more people resuming normal life than there are who are experiencing the negative emotion.